Have you ever pulled a plastic container out of the dishwasher only to find it still tinted orange, red, or brown from last week's pasta leftovers? It's one of those little annoyances that almost everyone has experienced. No matter how many times you scrub it, that stained Tupperware just won't go back to its original color. But why does this happen? Why do plastic containers stain so easily, especially with certain types of food? In this video, we're diving deep into the science behind plastic staining, exploring the chemistry, the culprits, and what you can do to prevent it. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. To start, let's talk about what plastic containers are actually made of. Most food storage containers are made from a type of plastic known as polypropylene. This is a lightweight, durable, and relatively heat-resistant material that makes it ideal for microwaving and storing food. But polypropylene, like many plastics, is somewhat porous on a microscopic level. That means even though it seems smooth and solid to the touch, it actually has tiny nooks and crannies that can trap particles from food. These particles can lodge into those microscopic pores, and once they're in there, they can be extremely difficult to remove, especially after being heated. Now let's consider what types of foods tend to cause staining. Tomato sauce is one of the most infamous culprits. If you've ever stored spaghetti or chili in a plastic container, you've probably noticed that it doesn't take long for that orange-red tint to set in. The main reason for this is a pigment called lycopene, a naturally occurring compound found in tomatoes and other red fruits and vegetables. Lycopene is fat-soluble, meaning it binds particularly well with oils. When you heat up a tomato-based food in the microwave, the oil in the sauce can carry the lycopene deep into the pores of the plastic. The heat helps the plastic expand ever so slightly, opening up those tiny pores even more and allowing the pigment to seep in. This staining effect is even more pronounced when the food is oily or greasy. That's because the oils act almost like a delivery system for the pigments, breaking down the surface tension and helping them penetrate the plastic more deeply. And once the container cools down and contracts again, it can essentially trap the pigment inside, making it very difficult to wash out later. That's why even after a cycle through the dishwasher, the stain remains. It's not just on the surface anymore. It's embedded inside the plastic itself. But staining isn't only about pigment and plastic. The microwave plays a huge role in this process. When you heat food in a plastic container, you're not just warming the contents, you're also causing the plastic to become more pliable. This doesn't mean it melts, but it does become more receptive to absorbing what's in contact with it. Microwaving food, especially oily or tomato-rich dishes, gives the pigment-laden oils the perfect opportunity to penetrate deep into the material. That's why containers used only for cold storage don't stain as much. It's not just what you put in them, it's how you use them. It's also worth noting that not all plastics stain equally. Cheaper, thinner plastics are more prone to staining than high-quality or specially treated containers. Some premium brands have proprietary formulas or coatings that make their containers more resistant to pigment absorption. Others use different polymers entirely that have tighter molecular structures, reducing the size and number of those tiny pores we talked about. However, even the best container can eventually fall victim to staining if it's repeatedly exposed to the same staining agents under heat. Now you might be wondering, is this staining dangerous? The good news is, in most cases, no. The discoloration is mostly cosmetic. 
Lycopene and similar pigments are natural compounds and not harmful. What's more important to pay attention to is how the container holds up over time. Scratches, warping, or plastic degradation can be signs that it's time to replace it. Staining, while unsightly, doesn't usually indicate that the container is unsafe for food storage. So, what can you do to avoid staining your containers? There are actually several practical steps you can take. First and foremost, if you're storing or reheating anything with a strong color, like marinara sauce, curry, or chili, consider using glass containers instead of plastic. Glass is non-porous, so it won't absorb pigments, and it's perfectly microwave safe. If you must use plastic, try coating the inside of the container with a light layer of oil spray before adding the food. This creates a barrier between the food and the container, reducing the chance of pigments embedding in the plastic. You can also try placing a paper towel over the food when microwaving to catch splatters before they hit the sides of the container. Cleaning techniques can also make a difference, though they won't always completely remove the stain. Soaking stained containers in a mixture of baking soda and warm water can sometimes help lift the pigment. Some people also swear by using a bit of bleach diluted with water as long as it's thoroughly rinsed afterward, or using lemon juice and setting the container in the sun. The natural acidity and UV light can help bleach out some of the discoloration, though results can vary depending on how deep the stain is. In the end, plastic containers stain because of a perfect storm of chemistry, heat, and material science. The porous nature of plastic, the fat-soluble pigments in food, and the heat from microwaving all work together to lock those colors in. While it's not necessarily harmful, it can be frustrating, especially when your container still looks dirty even after it's been cleaned. But with a little knowledge and a few smart habits, you can reduce or even prevent staining altogether. So the next time you see that stubborn orange tint, don't be too hard on yourself. It's just science doing its thing. And now you know exactly why it happens and what you can do about it. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.